March the 26th, 2016, on that date, a match would take place that would change the jujitsu world forever. I was just getting out of the shower at the time. There's nothing quite like a good old scrub and tug to get your day started off on the right foot. You know, it was a pretty normal day for me, but that was until I logged onto the website, www.facebook.com. And that is where I saw it. A brown belt clowning his black belt opponent so much that you'd think he was Heath Ledger from The Dark Knight. And little did I know that the brown belt in question would go on to becoming one of the greatest and most hated competitors jujitsu has ever seen. His name, Gordon Ryan. What's up? Did you miss me yet? You're right, I did not give you a video last Friday. Your boy has been working and grinding on one second. <laughs> Smash like, baby. Like I said, I have been working and grinding religiously on this video. This is a video I have wanted to make for a while now, and I knew that it was gonna be a pain in the ass to edit, which it was. But last week, I decided to just go for it, and here you guys go. So on three, we're gonna learn a little bit about Mr. Gordon Ryan. Three. Gordon No F's Given Ryan was born on the 8th of July, 1995, making him a crab man, I guess. I was actually there. It was pretty alright. The lore isn't that extensive on what his early life was like, the lore being a BJJHeroes.com. Hang on, what happens when you type in Jedi Does Jiu Jitsu? So this is my artistic representation on what probably happened. All right, class, so we're gonna go around the rooms now, and we're gonna give our names and a cool fact about ourselves. So why don't you go first, Johnny? Hi, my name's Johnny. I want to be a firefighter when I grow up. Very good, Johnny. Why don't you go next, Gordon? I am the keen. Oh. Okay. Ryan would start training at the young age of 15 under the tutelage of Tom D. B. L. S. The epitome of masculinity. <laughs> And after a few months of training, he would cross paths with a newly minted brown belt by the name of Gary Tonin, who was in the middle of making waves in the sport with his, um, interesting style. As the lore puts it, the two grapplers became good friends. Tantalizing writing, guys. It would not be long before Tonin would move up in the world, becoming one of the coaches at Brunswick BJJ, where Ryan would start attending classes to learn from his best bud. And it wouldn't be long before the two of them started cooking up some crazy ideas. Hey Gordon, you know how watching high-level jujitsu these days is about as exciting as watching paint dry? Yes. Here's an idea for you. We make it exciting. Your a genius. You see, what they realized was that at the highest levels, you could have a whole 10 minute round where not a single point was scored because good competitors are incentivized to play it safe. Really safe. And what that means is that as a spectator sport, jujitsu is not great. Which means making a living as a full time competitor is basically impossible. It would be like buying a Lamborghini on a McDonald's salary. Here in my garage, just bought this uh, new Lamborghini. Which is why they had their eyes on an alternative option to the mainstream competitive jiu-jitsu scene. A movement which had been started by a musician, a stoner, and a tattoo enthusiast. Submission only jiu-jitsu. This new format of competition was the brainchild of one Eddie Bravo, who had branched off from conventional jiu-jitsu way back in the day to specialize on strictly no-gi jiu-jitsu, with the intention of making jiu-jitsu more applicable to MMA and self-defense situations. The basic premise of submission-only grappling is you take away any points or advantages for positions that you would have given in traditional tournaments, and what this does is it takes away the pressure off of your athletes. They're less afraid of making a silly mistake that's gonna lose them two points right off the opening, and they're gonna lose by those two points. And so they're more free to open up their games to be more aggressive. This will hopefully make jujitsu a little more fun to watch, a little more spectator friendly, boost those views. Which at the end of the day means that there's more money in the prize pool to pay your athletes. Unless of course you're just trying to screw your athletes over, which 
I guess that's cool too. And another major tweak to the rules that Eddie Bravo did was making matches way longer, 20 minutes long, giving the competitors a lot more time to gauge their opponent and set up a submission. However, this does with it bring the problem of people playing this rule set and just bleeding out those 20 minutes, waiting for overtime and winning by shortest escape time. But that's a whole nother topic. Let's not worry about that today. And for all these points, Gary and Gordon, the grappling gods, or GG, GG, as we shall henceforth call them, decided that submission only jujitsu was where they were gonna make their stand. What they both saw in this brand new format of jujitsu was unlimited potential for growth, exposure, recognition, and of course, that sweet old cash prize, baby. Tonin himself was a three-time EBI champion, winning 10 out of his 12 matches by submission, which made him the hottest name in submission only jujitsu at the time. This was in stark contrast to the mainstream jujitsu tournaments where he would have memorable matches, but for one reason or another would never seem to be able to deliver on the goods when the situation called for it. In traditional jujitsu, he was a janitor. In submission only jujitsu, he was Drake. And it would not be long before his star pupil would join him and not only follow in his footsteps, but surpass them. Nine thousand four hundred and twenty. What is that? That is the number of hours it takes me to edit these videos for you guys. You may ask yourself, Jedi, how the Ooh. f do you do that? Well, it's a lot of caffeine late nights. I'm here with Jason. And you're clearly a Dustin Poirier fan. <laughs> <laughs> But if you guys enjoy all the time that I put into making these videos as entertaining as possible, I just have one ask. Hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. We are trying to hit 13 subscribers by the end of the year. I got faith in you guys. Let's do this. Let's get back to the video. Now, Gordon at the time had been making a little bit of a name for himself in smaller promotions. He had been taking on names such as BJ Parch, Nathan Apple Orchard. And of course, there was a clip that we saw at the beginning of the video of him popping a squat and taking a steaming hot dookie on a seasoned competitor in James Patridge in a pear tree. And after that clip went viral, or as viral as a jujitsu clip can go, that would finally get him his golden ticket to join his coach in an open weight class bracket for a prize of up to $50,000 at the holiest of all submission only tournaments the Eddie Bravo invitation. Now the EBI six card that he would debut at was absolutely stacked. No joke, some of the best Nogi Jiu Jitsu grapplers in the entire world across all weight classes. You had footlocking wizards like Dean Lister and Eddie Wolverine Cummings. Wrestling extraordinaire and ADCC veteran, Rustim Shiev, the Russian bear. But by far, the most intimidating competitor in the entire bracket and favorite to win by a long stretch was the current ADCC world champion, Yuri Simos. This would be a huge step up in competition for Ryan. Even his coach, Gary Tonin, when he had competed at this level, had fallen short time and time again. The stakes could literally not be higher. A million dollars on the line. The only question left was, do you put it all on black or red? But Gordon had a secret weapon on his side. A head coach with a beautiful face and a cheeky smile, whose IQ was so high that if you were to upload his consciousness into a supercomputer, all the information would take that and literally shrink it into a black hole that would swallow up the entire earth. And one of the strengths that would go to make Gordon Ryan one of the greatest grapplers of all time would be his unshakable belief in himself to perform and execute a winning game plan. I guess you would call it confidence. And honestly, this is such an important thing, not only in winning jujitsu tournaments, but in life in general. If you do not have the confidence to go out there and take life by the horns, get after what you're getting after, chase your dreams, they will literally die inside of you. Gordon would get off to a phenomenal start, finishing his first two matches by submission and getting him a ticket to the semifinals. However, it would be here where he would have to go face to face with the man that everybody thought was the baddest competitor in the entire bracket, Yuri 
Simos. I just want to take a second to point out that Yuri in Chinese means octopus. So. You're welcome. Yuri was coming off of a win against Gordon Ryan's longtime friend and mentor, Gary Tonin. This match did go the entire 20 minutes, so Yuri was probably a little exhausted going in to the semifinals. And in this Titanic match between Ryan and Samos, they would go the entire 20 minute regulation time. By the end of it, Samos was absolutely exhausted going into the overtime rounds and gordon ryan would pounce on this opportunity to secure a rear naked choke finish in overtime winning and getting him into the finals in one of the craziest upset victories that jujitsu has ever seen ryan would go on to winning the finals in overtime cleaning out the entire bracket and taking home forty thousand dollars cash prize this standout performance would shock many in the jujitsu community and put the mainstream tournaments on watch after this ryan would take a belt a six month break before he would return in the fall to challenge and be another elite level competitor in Keenan Cornelius who he would take on in a no time limit submission only match or he would submit him with a heel hook at about the 90 minute mark and yes that is a long time. Honestly, I would probably tap just to get out of there and go about my life. Now it is true that Gordon had both taken on and beaten two of the most elite level competitors in the entire jujitsu world. But to be fair, these were under different role sets, submission only, no points that these competitors were not used to competing under. And the consensus in the mainstream jujitsu community was that if he ever made the switch into point specific tournaments, he would get crushed by the pure point fighters at ADCC and Nogi World. Now this would be a stigma that he would have to fight but for the meantime, he was content to go around winning tens of thousands of dollars and establishing himself as Submission Only's premier competitor. <music> 2017 would be the year of action for Ryan as it would be the year that he would compete at the Abu Dhabi Combat Club, which in my opinion is the most elite Nogi Jiu Jitsu tournament in the entire world. Held once every two years, it's basically the Olympics of Jiu Jitsu, but better. Now Ryan would be going into his bracket with a huge question mark over his head as he was killing it in the submission only format. But Leandro Lowe, an established point fighter, had beaten him earlier that year four to zero on points in a more conventional point oriented format. However, he would soon put all doubters to rest as he would blast through his first three opponents, even submitting the former ADCC champion and giant of a man, Hamalo Barrow. This would get him his ticket to the finals where he would again face one of Jiu Jitsu's toughest competitors. Yes, we're talking about the man, the myth, the human dictionary himself, Keenan Cornelius. Now, yes, he had beaten Keenan before, but that was only after a submission only match that lasted 90 minutes. Would he be able to make the adjustments necessary to get the wins under a point format and shorter time controls? Or would he, just like his mentor before him, fall short at the highest levels? The match would get off to a solid start with both competitors scoring takedowns in the first half of the match. Under the ADCC roll sets, no points would be scored in the first half of the match, incentivizing the competitors to give the audience more action. However, after the first 10 minutes, points went live, meaning the next person to score would most likely go on to winning the match and the entire tournament. And with eight minutes left on the clock, the veteran competitor Keenan would go for a single leg attempt looking for those decisive points. However, our boy Gordon would counter him with one of the nastiest arm and guillotine counters I've ever seen, which he would use to sweep him to mount. And yes, get the tap. And just like that, Gordon Ryan had become the ADCC champion, winning the most prestigious jiu-jitsu tournament in the entire world. The haters had been silenced and it was a good day for the boys from Brunswick. Gordon Effin Ryan had established himself as one of the best nogi grapplers in the world. And he was only 22 at the time. So maybe it's time for you to get your act together and move out of your mom's basement. Now, all of this would have been beyond great for any of us. But there's something that you have to understand about Gordon. At the core of his being, he was a competitor. And thus, he would stop at nothing less than being the greatest grappler that Nogi Jiu Jitsu has ever seen. And to do that, a measly ADCC medal was not gonna cut it. He would need to win the absolute. As it stood now, he had placed second in the absolute, losing in the finals six to zero to Felipe Pena, whom he had actually lost to the year before. So needless to say, the odds of him achieving his goal did not look that promising.
But anyways, an ADCC gold medal is not too shabby for your first time. And he would be content for the next little bit of time to just go around stacking up more and more prize money, even popping in to Meta Morris to take on a relic of Gracie Jiu Jitsu. And of course he would return to EBI to clean house, but in the finals would face one of the nastiest armbar attempts that I have ever seen somebody yet not tap to, but would go on to winning by rear naked choke, so it's all good. His opponent, by the way, was this beautiful Ozzy, who you may have seen before. The next big challenge would be the 2018 IBJJF Nogi Worlds. Now, despite his performance at ADCC, there is still a wide consensus that under pure point format tournaments, where points are live for the entire match, he would waffle, he would coffle, he would falafel, he would not win gold. This was despite the fact that he took down Keenan in the finals of ADCC before points were live and controlled him for a few minutes. I mean, come on guys, the writing was on the wall. In his weight class, he would win his first match, but in his second match, he would face his old adversary from way back in the day, Yuri Simos. Would Gordon be able to adapt his style and be a veteran point fighter at his own game, or would he be forever delegated to be a submission only black belt? Yeah, he beat him. It was by points, 11 to 0. And for his finals, he would face Hulk of a Man and human cyborg Roberto Abreu. Now, he would win this match by DQ because Cyborg decided to do a little slappy clappy. Solid etiquette here, really. And in the absolutes, he would beat some guys and win. He even won the finals of the absolutes with a score of zero to zero by one advantage, thus finally completing his metamorphosis from spectator friendly, submission only action packed Gordon Ryan to Mr. Play It Safe Point Fighter, ADCC champ, Pan Am's champ, world champ, and world absolute champion. However, there was still one more prize which had, till this point, eluded him, and he would not rest until he had laid his hands on it the ADCC absolute championship. He would get his second chance at the prize the next year, being invited to the Abu Dhabi Combat Club Jiu-Jitsu World Championships. Woof, that was a mouthful. This was now his chance to right the wrong from two years ago and claim the baddest prize in all of Noki Jiu-Jitsu. Yes, he had been growing for the past two years, learning and improving, but can you really learn enough in that time to make a difference? But more importantly, would his frosted tips give him that 10% steez advantage? Buckle in guys, because we're about to answer all of these questions. First round, finished by heel hook. Standard fare for a Nogi guy, really. Second round, his coach, Gary Tony, and the man who had given him his black belt. Bracket done the Brunswick boys dirty here. Third round, Lachlan Gills. Another Aussie who had been having a great day so far, but not right now. He beat him by rear naked choke, moving him on to the finals. This is where he would have to face the one that they call Big Cheeks, and not the kind on your face either. He was the longtime Jiu Jitsu veteran and two time ADCC champion. He was Marcus Almeida Bushesha. As you have probably guessed, these stakes for both sides could not have been higher. Two opposing sides of the jiu-jitsu world going head-to-head -head for dominance. It was like Qui-Gon Jinn battling Darth Maul from the first Star Wars. Would these traditionalists, represented by Buchecha, be victorious? Or would this young upstart, this reckless and flamboyant personality, lay his hands on one of the most coveted prizes in the jiu-jitsu world? The tension was palpable at the start of the match as both men brought their A of A games. Brian would score a beautiful sweep in the first half of the match before points were live, but honestly that would kind of be the highlight of the entire 20 minute round as not much else would happen with both men playing it extremely safe. And so with the score being 0-0 zero to zero with no advantages, it would immediately go into a 10 minute overtime round, but with the stakes so unbelievably high, and both men basically neutrifying and nullifying each other's offense, nothing would continue to happen. However, halfway through the 10 minute overtime match, Buchecha would get a penalty for stalling. This would give Ryan the edge and put massive pressure on Buchecha to score something in the next five minutes, which he was unable to, thus deciding the finals of the ADCC Nogi Absolute Bracket with a score of 0-0 zero to zero and one penalty. In just four short years, Ryan had gone from competing in the small submission-only niche of jiu-jitsu to putting himself in the contention as one of the greatest grapplers that the sport has has ever seen. And he was only 24 at the time. So maybe it's time for you to stop binging The Queen's Gambit on Netflix. And I don't know, start making something of yourself.
Now hang on, I know there's some of you in the back thinking to yourselves, man, look at this guy. He's a natural athlete. He uses steroids like everybody else. He doesn't deserve the success that he's gotten. He got lucky. And he's just being a quacky bag. That's fair. There's a little truth to what you're saying. He's definitely a natural athlete. He was able to start training at a young age with great coaches. And yeah, he's a little lucky. That's life for you. Life isn't fair. Life is pain. Anybody who says differently is selling something. But honestly, I still think that there's something that all of us can learn here. Think of all the times he's had to adapt his style. First to submission only tournaments, then to the ADCC rule set, then to Nogi Worlds, and then back to ADCC rules. These transitions from sub only to points are not the easiest transitions to make. Ask anybody who has competed under both formats. Think of all the times he's been doubted. Being counted out time and time again. But every single time, rising to the occasion in spectacular fashion. Now let's be real for a second. Life can be a fucking bitch sometimes. But something that I've noticed personally is that when you don't run from your problems, but face them head on, things always seem to work out in the end. Funny how that works. All right, guys, there's your positive spin for this video. I need my coffee now. Hey guys. Do you like my new chair? Check this out. All right, class, that's all we have for the video today. This is a very different video than I'm used to making. It's a video, like I said, I've wanted to make for a while now. I would love to hear what you think about it. Don't be afraid to leave me some feedback down below. And I want to give a shout out to our boy, Jake. Did his first tournament the other day and won two gold and one silver. Let's give it up for Jake. Good job, brother. Hope there's many more to come. Be sure to head on over to my Instagram, Jedi underscore himself. I'll link that down below if you want a shot at making it into a future video. Maybe I'll read one of your spicy DMs in the next video. While you're at it, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. If you are new around here, hi. Um, Jedi, nice to meet you. I make the best videos on the YouTube platform. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell, baby. I will talk to all of you in the next video. Remember, take calculated risks and you will be successful. Bye.